Hi, I'm Josh McDowell. And I'm Ben Bennett. And we want to welcome you to the Free to Thrive video series. Throughout this series, we will be exploring key biblical and research-informed principles to help you heal from hurts, overcome a variety of struggles, and thrive in your relationships with God and others. Whether you are dealing with great pain from your past, anxiety, some kind of unhealthy behavior or relationship pattern, or are just longing for more in your relationship with God and others, this series is for you. Josh and I have seen God radically change our lives and thousands of others through the principles we'll be sharing in this series. And it's our prayer that God uses these sessions to bring hope and healing to your life. So let's get into session one. Several decades ago, I hit my breaking point. Although my ministry and family life was thriving, I wasn't. I was constantly on the verge of emotional or physical exhaustion. I had trouble saying no and would say yes to help people out or speak at events at my own expense. I was saying yes with my lips, but no with my heart. I needed God's healing. Eventually, I reached out for help to my friend, Dr. Henry Cloud. Over the next year, we met almost weekly. As an incredible psychologist, he helped me understand the deep unmet longings of my heart that had built up from childhood and the destructive wake that I was leaving behind me as a result of my unhealthy attempts to cope with these longings on my own. You see, I grew up with an alcoholic father and was sexually abused by our hired farmhand for years. These experiences crushed me. I seldom received the love and the affection that I so wanted as a child. In response, early in life, I began rescuing others from their problems in an attempt to experience love and acceptance. Through Dr. Cloud's help, I came to grips with my deep and lingering hurt from these experiences. Although I thought I had left the pain in the past, I had actually buried it alive. The pain was coming out through short temper and a deep desire to please other people, no matter what the cost was. I was trying to escape my unresolved longings and pain from the past through ministry success. But rather than satisfying my longings, those efforts left me feeling exhausted, angry, and full of shame. I thank God for providing a friend and therapist who was able to kickstart my journey to healing and freedom by guiding me to understand my unmet longings and unwanted behaviors and learn how to have these longings quenched in a healthy, satisfying way. All of us deal with hurt in life and what we call unwanted behaviors. Simply put, an unwanted behavior is any thought, belief, or action you want to stop but can't. It could be anger, anxious thoughts, a negative view of yourself, overeating, or some kind of unhealthy sexual behavior, for example. Here's a couple stats that show the depth of people's struggles today. Three-fourths of Americans report various symptoms from stress, like lying awake at night, anger, fear, or fatigue. More than 19 million Americans have strong urges to make purchases and spend excessively even when they can't afford to. And 41% of adults in the U.S. report symptoms of anxiety and depression. Even the Apostle Paul shared about his own struggle with unwanted behaviors in Romans 7 when he wrote, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep undoing. A few years ago, I was mentoring a student named Ethan, and he struggled with explosive anger, depression, and pornography. For years, he had been confessing his struggle to others, growing in his relationship with God, and praying for God to take these issues away. But no matter what he tried, it seemed his struggles didn't improve. Throughout the years, We've met so many people like Ethan who have tried and tried to experience freedom from certain struggles, yet with little results. 
Why do our attempts to overcome our unwanted behavior often fail? One of the reasons is we often do not address the legitimate longings behind our unhealthy thoughts and behaviors. What do I mean? Well, God creates every human being with longings for our God-given desires to be satisfied. For example, Psalm 145 says, He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. And Psalm 145 says, now this is saying it to God, you satisfy the desires of every living thing. We all have these God-given longings. For example, we feel satisfied and at peace being accepted by others, rather than by experiencing rejection by others. We want people to appreciate the things we do, to be thanked when we do someone a favor. It feels great when people encourage us and affirm who God has made you and me to be with our unique gifts and talents, rather than criticizing us or tearing us down. You know, Proverbs 4 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Everything we do in life flows from our hearts. All of our thoughts and actions are driven by the longings of our heart. And God blesses and firms our longings. The trouble comes when we seek to satisfy these legitimate, God-given longings in ways that bring destruction or pain, rather than pursuing things that truly satisfy us. By understanding our longings, we can begin to understand how to find the true fulfillment that we seek. A moment ago, I shared about a student named Ethan that I mentored who tried for years to overcome his struggles with anger, depression, and pornography. His futile attempts to grow began to change when he stopped simply condemning his struggles and started questioning them. Only then did he discover the unmet longings behind his struggles and how they played out in the present. As we explored his life growing up, he shared how he often didn't feel accepted for who he was. He felt like he couldn't measure up to his parents' expectations. His grades were never up to their standards. He struggled to fit in with his friends. He had a deep longing to be accepted for who he was, a need that often went unmet. As we explored week after week about the recent times he became angry, depressed, or, or went to porn, sure enough, there was always an incident right before these instances that left him feeling rejected or inadequate. He had been caught in this cycle for years. His anger in porn use was a way for him to feel safe, attempt to protect himself, and receive a temporary good feeling through the dopamine his brain released in these situations. Ethan began to experience God finally set him free from these struggles when he discovered what he was truly longing for and how to have it fulfilled. He began to experience acceptance, love, and safety by intentionally reaching out to God and trusted friends in his time of need. And in time, these unwanted behaviors began to go away. For most of us, our unmet longings run deep. We live in a broken world where things are not the way they were supposed to be. We experience the loss of friends and family members. We endure divorce, abandonment, abuse, and all kinds of pain. The hurts from these unmet longings can be devastating, especially if they are consistent. They can lead to these deep caverns of cravings in our souls. These unmet longings and hurts can also affect our perceptions of the world around us. We can develop a sense of inadequacy or worthlessness, believing there is something wrong with us. We can think that God is distant, a cosmic killjoy, or obsessed with rules like a parent or authority figure that we know. We can come to believe that people will reject us if they know what we're struggling with. Early in life, I began dealing with anger, feelings of worthlessness, depression, and anxiety from my unmet longings. My dad worked long hours at the office and traveled for weeks at a time on ministry trips. I felt his physical distance, but things didn't seem to be much better when he was home. He was quick to explode in anger and yell at me when I misbehaved. I remember repeatedly getting in trouble and being spanked while my dad was in this state of rage. 
it was terrifying. I lived in fear of my father for years. On top of this, I was bullied by my friends at school for my weight, how I talked, the way I dressed, and for my faith. I don't say this to blame others for their actions, but to be honest with the reality that I was deeply hurting as a kid, constantly feeling that there was something wrong with me. After I developed obsessive compulsive disorder, I felt that life had become close to unbearable. Every day was a battle to get through. I was consumed with fears about my safety. I feared getting into a car accident or somehow losing my ability to speak and to move my body. I feared being embarrassed and rejected by others. And then I began to doubt the existence of God, and I feared that He too would reject me upon death. For almost a decade, I obsessed about dying and going to hell, praying upwards of 20 times a day that Jesus would save my soul because I wasn't convinced that he had. I began to wish that I had never been born because I thought that would have been more bearable than the torture and fear I was living in. Eventually, I needed something more, something more to medicate, to cope, to escape the pain in my life. And I soon found something that could give me a high like a drug, and it was free, and I thought no one ever had to know about it. I found hardcore pornography. I became addicted. It kept pulling me back as I tried and tried to push away. And nothing could bring me the high and escape that porn brought. I wanted it gone, but at the same time, it felt like it kept me alive. I had no idea it would cost me 12 years of my life. 12 years of agonizing self-hatred, hopelessness, and failed promises to stop. It took years to understand the unmet longings that were contributing to all of these issues in my life. But once I did, Jesus brought breakthrough and freedom like never before. Identifying our unmet longings and how they play out in the present takes time. So be patient with yourself. The key is to start the process of examining and assessing the longings that underlie your unwanted behaviors today. Then start asking yourself, why am I drawn to these longings more than others? Ask, where have these longings gone unmet in my past? Throughout this series, you'll hear from people who have faced hurt and struggled as well, and yet found real healing and thriving lives. So meet our brave friends who so vulnerably share about their personal journeys. My name is Audrey Hardin, and I am a licensed professional counselor. When it comes to my story, my suffering, my, my unmet needs and longings, therapy really was a, a catalyst to my own change. And it's really something that I am blessed to be able to utilize my story to help others. I'm always still healing and in process, um, but I think the more that I uh, look to the Lord for that hope and identity and restoration, the more I feel free to be who I am and not need to put on a false identity or a false sense of, of having it all together in order to be loved. And the more that I rest in my identity in Him, the more free I feel just to be myself and to love others out of who He has gifted me to be and empowered me to be instead of me trying to be valuable and trying to be perfect and trying to perform or outdo the other person so that I, I can appear as uh, valuable or worthy. My name is Ernie Chambers. I'm married to Jacqueline Chambers. Uh, we've been married for 38 years. A couple of struggles that uh, have plagued my life early on was um, adultery, um, affairs, and pornography um, literally destroyed my life on all facets. Once the exposure took place, I began to realize that I had worth in life. I had identity, I had purpose, and um, 
been walk, walking in that healing for about the last 20 years. I'm Jackie Chambers, enjoying life right now with two adult daughters who are out the house. So it's just, just me and him. I'm a hairstylist uh, for over 40 years, and we also have the opportunity to uh, work in ministry. I'm a founder of an organization, Redemptive Journey, where we are able to help people who struggle with sexual um, behaviors and betrayal trauma. So I am Monica Zuniga Bailey, and I am a communicator and a consultant full-time. I've been in the nonprofit ministry arena for about a decade, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. If you've lived it all, you've been through some things. For me, I have personally um, been, been a victim of sexual assault, and so from there, um, from dealing with the sexual assaults, I um, spiraled in a lot of ways. Um, I struggled with alcohol abuse. Um, I dabbled in drugs for a season. And um, ultimately, I was in a journey of really struggling with my identity and who I was. Uh, for me personally, the journey of identity was one that um, was an up and down ride for many years until I was able to truly come back to who God says I am and find freedom. My name is Anthony Flagg. I go by Fidel. Um, I am a rap artist. I'm a communicator and a creator. Um, I am originally from Memphis, North Memphis, and uh, now I reside in Dallas, Texas. A couple key issues that I dealt with in my life was I dealt with chronic physical fatigue and um, chronic physical pain. Um, these were actually the root of some of these issues was anxiety, depression, and shame. And so the journey of walking through dealing with the physical pain and the, the chronic fatigue, um, I walked through the journey of dealing with shame, depression, anxiety, um, because of the things that I, I dealt with as a, as a kid. After working through that healing process, you gain a confidence in dealing with these issues. And so now, when I see the future, it seems brighter now. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm less concerned about finding coping me mechanisms in order to deal with it, because now I can look them head on and say, hey, um, through the grace of God, I've been given tools to face these things, and now I can walk with my head up. I can walk in boldness and faith, knowing that, hey, I have the, what it takes. I'm equipped to deal with these issues. We all want to live lives of purpose and satisfaction, yet it can be so hard to find biblically-based, holistic answers to the things holding us back. This is one reason why, in addition to this series, Ben and I have launched a global initiative called the Resolution Movement. Through it, so many people are overcoming their hurts and struggles and experiencing thriving lives of true wholeness. Join this movement and get more resources by checking out resolutionmovement.org. Today, embrace the path of healing and freedom that God wants for you through His ways and by the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. It's time to take off the mask and come out of hiding but we must be willing to expose and surrender our sickness to Jesus. He's the great physician and invite others in to support us in our journey. We're only as sick as our secrets. Our shame because of our secret behaviors breeds and multiplies in the dark. We must expose it to the light. No matter the struggles you are wrestling with, remember that it is the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. Let us remember that when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God came after them. It was the radical love of the Father that said to them, where are you? It was a redemptive heart of God that caused him to go after his creation. Similarly, today God is pursuing us, wooing us, and inviting us in his kindness, not as disappointment, to turn towards him and towards change. Receive his invitation to be met with healing, grace, and change as you go through this series and discover his path to set you free to thrive.